And then last night, um, Sanders did a um, town hall. And um, I was watching to see, you know, because, you know, it's funny. This wasn't quite uh, February of 2015, but it was in the summer of, of, of 2015 when two or three uh, protesters uh, from Black Lives Matter um, uh, basically rushed the stage at Netroots Nation. And I remember there was a lot of uh, Bernie supporters who were upset about this. And from my perspective, and I think we, we, we shared this when we were talking about this, Michael, was that this was a good thing for Sanders because he clearly had n very little experience in speaking to the concerns of African Americans in this day and age. And it was early enough in the campaign where he'd have the opportunity to, uh, to, to adjust. And I don't know, and while I think to a certain extent, he probably um, grew a little bit in that respect, I don't know that in the context of the campaign that he had enough time <clears throat> to understand. I mean, I think, you know, look, he has a very good record in terms of, uh, of civil rights. But I also think that we're in a different era and there's different uh, sensitivities. And so uh, this was, I thought, one of the best answers he gave, at least in the context of this question uh, last night. There was another uh, question where it was slightly addressed where I don't think he did quite as well. But this one, I thought he did very well, and and I'll and I'll show you why too. To an important question, we have a question from uh, Noella Sama, he's a policy analyst here in Washington. Thank you, Senator Sanders. Uh, there's a deep sense of mistrust for you by by some within the African American community. Many feel you undermined Secretary Clinton after her nomination by not showing enough support, and which contributed to President Trump being elected. Along with that, many also feel that you are at times racially insensitive, and by virtue of your background, don't reflect their experience enough. How do you address these concerns, and what's your approach to winning their votes? Well, first of all, I reject the first premise that you made. I knock my brains out. In fact, I just saw a letter today from Hillary Clinton, which said, thank you, Bernie, for working so hard in my election. All right? We went to state after state. I think we had 35, 40 rallies in all of the battleground states. So I do not accept for one moment that I did not do everything that I could. And then people say, well, you know, some of your supporters voted for Trump. True. But some of Hillary's supporters in 2008 voted for McCain. That's the reality. More of those did that than voted for me. Now, on the second point, okay. Pause we it for one up. second. I just want to just add in here because this, and this is going to come up in, in, a, in a different story. Apparently, over the course of uh, the three months after the nomination to the election, that would have been October, uh, September, and August, he did 39 rallies, 17 rallies in the last seven days of the campaign. So that's, I mean, that's pretty substantial number of uh, rallies. He worked quite hard for her. Uh, I mean, but, I, right, I, I'll just continue. Well, people are mad that he ran it all. That's the reality. More of those did that than voted for me. Now, on the second point, okay, we ended up winning among younger people more votes from young African Americans, Latinos, Asian Americans, Native Americans, than Clinton and Trump combined. All right. Furthermore, if you look at the polling out there, we're doing quite well with the African American community. But let me just raise an issue here. Maybe you know, I haven't been as strong on this issue as I should be. I talk about the fact that we have a nation of massive inequality. Okay, and I believe that. I think that's the most important issue we can talk about. But within that inequality, we have another inequality, and that is racial disparity. And it's important that everybody understands that. That means that the wealth gap between a white family and a black family is 10 to 1. If you are a black mother, the likelihood it is that you, are, you, you will have a baby that will die. Your infant mortality rate two and a half times higher than a white mother. If you are a black businessman, I remember talking to a fellow in Milwaukee, black businessman, said, Bernie, I can't get a loan from the bank. And his business was pretty good. 
because of redlining. Black kids are leaving college more deeply in debt than white kids. So we have an enormous amount of disparity in wealth, in education, in health that must be addressed. And I will work as hard as I can, number one, to have a cabinet that reflects what America is, and number two, to do everything that I can in every way to end all forms of racism in this country. And so, you know, that... Perfect um, answer. Yeah, and, and I think what, what's, what's particularly encouraging about that is that, um, and, you know, look... I, yeah, I, I, you don't want to give somebody um, a, a cookie for 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 doing stuff that is sort of like baseline, but uh, saying that he acknowledging that he could have done better on some stuff at one point. I can't remember the exact wording, but he says, you know, I, I could have done better on this. Acknowledging that he could do better on it, and uh, indicating, you know, that. There is a specific element, whatever you believe to be the root causes, whether you believe that it's a function of, of, of class that drives racism or not. The, the reality, the lived reality of people of color in this country is that they may be subjected to the same um, class disparities but there's a whole nother set of disparities that they have to uh, deal with. And acknowledging that reality is, I think, crucial to I mean, identifying them is crucial to dealing with them. And you certainly it's certainly not going to happen the other way. You, you certainly can't, you know, not be aware and acknowledge those realities and hope to deal with them. I just don't think that's possible. Um, but so both from a substantive and a rhetorical standpoint, that's a huge upgrade. Bernie 2.0 there is um, is a big upgrade, and that's good in that respect. I the reason I really liked it though is the way I mean, you you covered obviously the most important part, but the seamlessness of him being able to totally reject the first premise of that question, which we explained. Well, yes, was I mean it's a separate question. Uh, yeah, it's like a separate right, but it's it's inelegant to combine those two things, and it's actually a feat to pull off simultaneously saying that question is total BS. That other question is hugely important, and let me sort of get to it. Yeah, the guy really pitched him a good question. I don't know uh, whose side the D.C. policy analyst is on, but it, it worked out really well in the end. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, look, I think part of the, um, and I don't know if the question about Clinton is, is meant to be a surrogate question for his relationship to the Democratic Party, but... Like you said earlier, Michael, he's made a point of saying, you know, show some respect to the institution. And part of the reason why I think particularly in the context of older African-Americans, I think we said this yesterday, is that the Democratic Party means something to them because of the material benefits that I think particularly older African-Americans are um, aware of relative to you know, their, their lived experience. Um, Republicans have made it really, um, have provided a very stark difference uh, for particularly older African Americans in terms of sort of some very fundamental um, uh, rights. To the extent that the Democratic Party, and there certainly, um, you know, has... Um, has not been as strong as it could be. I mean, even you know, going back to Social Security, let's say, um, that stuff is a little bit more subterranean. But the Republicans have been very, very explicit in their hostility to um, to people of color. And 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 even for what it's worth, like with with, I mean, I don't want to get into the whole New Deal and Roosevelt. And obviously, it goes without saying that there was huge compromises and racism built into negotiating right. with Southern Democrats, like you said. But there's also the reality that under Roosevelt, there was actually a big shift in the African-American vote towards Democrats. So even in that time, actually, yes, this was the party that on a relative scale was doing a hell of a lot better. And that was uh, registered in uh, support.